Boston's preliminary election for mayor and city council will take place on Tuesday, September 26. There will be three open seats on the council, one of them being vacated by Tito Jackson, who currently represents District 7. The district includes most of Roxbury and parts of Dorchester, the South End, and the Fenway. Among those hoping to be the new councillor in District 7 is our guest, Brian Keith. Thank you very much for being with us, Brian. Thank you very much for having me. First of all, t talk about your background, your life in the city, and, and what kind of work you've been doing. Sure, absolutely. No, I'm a lifelong Boston resident, born and raised here, attended John D. O'Brien School of Math and Science, uh, and then moved on to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Dream was to be a pilot. Um, had to defer that dream just because of the costs of, of uh, tra pilot training as well as the cost of college. Um, but I stayed in the industry. And, you know, I think that's important because it shows that, you know, even when things don't go your way initially, you know, you can still find a way to make your dream happen. So I stayed in the industry and today I serve as vice president of charter sales for a private jet company. So, uh, if, if first of all, that, that's an unusual background for somebody running as a candidate in an election. Uh, sure. What do you draw from that that would make you a good counselor? Well, we moved to Roxbury. My wife and I, we moved to Roxbury four years ago. And we knew as soon as we purchased our house that we were going to be there long term. Uh, we actually had our son, our first child, 20 months ago. His name is August. And um, he cemented that. You know, we were going to be raising him in Boston, raising him in Boston public schools and um, hoping that he also starts his life in Boston. So we immediately started working actively in our neighborhood association. I became president of the association, Mount Pleasant Forest and Vine Street, uh, four months after we moved in. In that association, in that capacity, we worked on several different initiatives, education, uh, we worked on development, we also worked on the opioid crisis, all uh, issues that are impacting Roxbury, South End, Fenway, all of District 7 and really all the city. Well, right out of the box, since you mentioned uh, the opiate crisis, uh, uh, and a lot of this is about people who, who come to Roxbury struggling with this, as sure. opposed to people from Roxbury Absolutely. themselves. But um, it's in your neighborhood, it's a concern, and, and one of the ideas floated is that maybe we need a safe place for people to inject, to, if, to, if nothing else, reduce the mortality. Um, how do you feel about something like that? You know, it, it's not my first solution to the problem. You know, I, I feel that safe injection sites uh, while there is scientific knowledge that it does help and it does save lives, you know, there's also a view that it enables the, the, the I guess, the bad behavior, if you will. Um, you know, I think that there are other solutions that we can take that can help, you know, uh, supporting programs that have proven successful um, and, and making sure that those are the programs that go forward. Programs that help the entire person not to get well for a day or two, but to get well, you know, for their lives, to bring them back into a place of productivity. Well, one, one thing I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with from your, your neighborhood association, just from living in Roxbury, is all this concern about the cost of housing, especially for sure. some of the long-term residents who Absolutely. find it more difficult to afford to live there. What should be done? Well, what I can say is what we've done in our neighborhood is we've engaged developers, we've engaged individuals who are coming into our neighborhood from the start. You know, a lot of times what happens is that, you know, uh, residents aren't involved or aren't invited to the conversation until it's halftime, until it's the fourth quarter. And at that point, the only opportunity we have to do is, you know, we yell and scream, we get in the street, we protest, you know, we get in people's faces. And at that point, we're hoping for pennies, we're hoping for scraps. You know, what we did in our neighborhood is we engaged developers from the beginning, from the beginning of the conversation to ensure that, you know, our needs and our wants were, were reflected at the, in the end product. And that's what happened. Uh, there were developments that were not mandated for affordability. Our neighborhood wanted affordability. They wanted to ensure that people who've been in our neighborhood for 20, 30, 40 years could afford to stay there. That was, those negotiations with those developers uh, were able to get us affordability where none was mandated. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Brian Keith, a candidate for city council in District 7. Um, Brian, what about uh, the schools? I, I mean, the city is spending more money out of its own budget on the school system, even though there's less money from uh, other sources. Sure. And there are these still mounting complaints about programs being cut, students are unhappy. Uh, sure. what, what should be done? Well, you know, what we've done, and, and this is even before we're elected, but what we've done is we've really, you know, gone over the budget with a fine-tooth comb, and we've looked for inefficiencies. You know, one blaring inefficiency that we found is transportation. There's many that exist, but, you know, just for the sake of this conversation, transportation is one that we found. Um, you know, we're sending buses with five kids on them, 
full-size school buses with five kids and we're sending them to one location, one school. Um, that, that puts their cost at $1,300 per student, which is $1,000 more than the largest uh, 200 school districts in the nation. That's unacceptable and it doesn't make any sense. You know, we came up with a solution we're calling uh, transportation transformation. Now what that does, it actually involves ride sharing. Uh, where we look at ride sharing as an opportunity to, uh, you know, work with vetted and quarried drivers who can, you know, go to those less, less, lesser traveled routes, pick up students and drop them off at multiple destinations. The savings that we would, uh, uh, that we would find uh, creating that efficiency, we could then take and invest right back into the schools, right back into programs and, and partnerships that work. Now, I, I, this might work out pretty well, but I also imagine the bus drivers union calling your office and saying, hey, you, you can't do that. Well, listen, there are a lot of opportunities for bus drivers. There's more than enough routes for, for them. Uh, there will still be plenty of routes that would be serviced by buses. But in a situation where you're sending a massive school bus for a small number of students, you know, we have to be uh, fiscally responsible, and but we also have to be socially responsible. So we have to ensure that those students are taken care of, and that's us being social. But we also have to be fiscal, and we have to make sure that we're not spending the taxpayers' dollars on something that is that is inefficient. I have to ask you about the trend that's taking shape right now in Boston with, sure. with public safety. We have decreases in violent crime across the board, citywide, and yet we have an increase in shootings, and I'm pretty sure that's concentrated in only a few parts of the city. Sure. Uh, what should be done differently? Well, you know, what, we, what we've done in our neighborhood is really engaged. And I know it sounds naive, but we've also engaged gang members. And it doesn't start when they're in the gang. It has to start uh, before that happens. We have to start engaging students and giving them options, our young people, our young adults, giving them options to succeed. Um, so it does start with a great education. It also starts with the home. You know, we have to ensure that, that our kids and their families have a place to lay their head. You know, that goes back to development and housing. Um, and then we have to ensure that there's opportunities for jobs and job placement out there for them once they graduate high school or further education. You know, the, the lore of gangs is that it, it, the camaraderie that it breeds, we have to ensure that in our neighborhoods we're breeding that same camaraderie but for productive and positive uh, reasons. Finally, uh, Brian, we should mention there, there are a lot more details about your background and your positions on your sure. website, so we should make sure people know how to get to that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got a fabulous website. We're very proud of it. Um, it can be found on the internet at www.briankeithforboston.org, and that's F-O-R, not the number four. Thank you very much for being with us. All right. Thank you. Brian Keith, candidate for city council in District 7.